paleontology and mystery go hand in hand. Because every time an animal is discovered, a million questions are raised, many of which never go fully answered. Even some of the most studied groups of extinct animals, like the non-avian dinosaurs, still raise many questions. However, sometimes discoveries are made that utterly stump scientists far beyond the average find, and these are four such baffling mysteries. The first puzzle on the list doesn't even pertain to a dead animal, rather what it left behind. In other words, a trace fossil. Trace fossils are records of living activity that do not contain preserved remains of the plant or animal itself. For example, the footprint left behind by a dinosaur would be a trace fossil. And in this first mystery, the trace fossil in question is Paleodictyon, commonly referred to as the hexagonal trace fossil, despite it also sometimes coming in the form of a polygon. The Paleodictyon is typically perceived as being created by the burrowing activity of an unknown aquatic organism that lived during the Cambrian, which dates to over 500 million years ago. But what has really grabbed scientists' attention is that these imprints are still being created to this day meaning that something has been making this mark for over half a billion years and it is still around today. But crazy enough, scientists still have no clue who the culprit is. Some suggestions have included worms or xenophyophoria, but both have yet to be proven. And in 2003, in attempts to finally solve this mystery once and for all, a submarine was deployed to volcanic vents in the mid-Atlantic ridge where many recent paleodictyons had been created. The submarine examined and took examples from the majority of patterns in the area, but remarkably no animal was spotted, leading to the new idea that the animal responsible for the marks created them as a trap for bacteria which it would later come back to feast on, which leads us to the hope that one day the culprit would be caught returning to the scene of the crime. Sometimes, even when there is more evidence than just a trace fossil, paleontologists find themselves just as puzzled as they are with Paleodictyon as is the case with the largest sauropod that never was. This mystery started all the way back in 1877, when a hired helper of famed paleontologist Edward Cope discovered a partially destroyed vertebra belonging to a sauropod. It was absolutely gigantic, with some conjectures suggesting that the complete bone would have been between 3 meters or 10 feet tall, which implied that this sauropod was an absolute unit. Cope deduced that it was a new species of Amphisoelius and gave it the name Fragilimus, a nod towards the abysmal state of the damaged bone. Sometime after its discovery, this behemoth started to garner a lot of attention, as based on Cope's writings, it likely would have been the longest sauropod ever, with some estimates putting it at 58 meters or 190 feet in length with a mass of 150 tons. And because of such claims, many people have wanted to study the bone themselves. However, there is a problem with that, as the bone is nowhere to be found. After Cope died in 1897, his extensive catalog was sold, but the vertebra was never found in the collection, and attempts to relocate the exact spot the bone was dug up have failed as well. There have been a few ideas as to how the fossil went missing, with the most popular being that the bone was in such bad condition that it simply disintegrated shortly after its discovery. And it's due to its unfortunate disappearance that many do not quote the species as being the largest sauropod, as paleontologists only have Cope's description to go off of. And in recent times, people have also become more speculative to the accuracy of his writings, with some stating that he made a typing error when recording its size, and others simply saying he was exaggerating. Those who don't think this was really the largest sauropod also point out the lack of attention Cope gave it and say there is no way Cope wouldn't have brought more attention to such a specimen, while also pointing out that no comparably large fossils have ever been found in the Morrison Formation. However, there is still some evidence that partially supports Cope's claims, as his rival at the time, Oath Neil Marsh, who was known to employ spies to overview Cope's finds, never challenged the sauropod size, and the man who actually found the bone, Oromel Lucas, would one day write about the experience, saying, what a monster the animal must have been. To add to this, communications between Lucas and other people who had witnessed the bone all agreed that it was an enormous vertebra. However, until another fossil can be found belonging to this mysterious species, it's hard to say just how big it truly was. In some mysteries though, it doesn't seem to actually matter whether more and more fossils are found, and this can be seen in one of the most long-running and popular mysteries in paleontology the Ediacaran biota. This classification applies to all life forms that lived between 635 and 538.8 million years ago. 
The members of this group came in all different shapes and sizes, ranging from being tiny to large. Some were complex, others simple, some were rigid, and others were jelly-like, with nearly every symmetry being found in between all of them. They were so odd that they have created the almost impossible task of classifying them, a problem that is still not solved. In fact, it's still not fully agreed upon as to whether they were animals or perhaps a fusion between animal and plant. More specific conjectures as to what they could have been include cnidarians, protozoans, or lichens. And one paleontologist has even claimed they were something new altogether, forming a unique phylum which he termed the Vendozoans. Perhaps the biggest breakthrough so far in this mystery came from the discovery of cholesterol in one of the more prominent members, Dickinsonia. This suggests that it was likely an animal, which contrasted with other findings from the same study, which indicated that another member of this group, the Nemiana, was likely made up of colonies of cyanobacteria. However, even with these advancements in our knowledge, there are still many mysteries about this group. For starters, paleontologists are fascinated by how this group ended up becoming fossils, since soft-bodied organisms typically do not fossilize. And what's especially interesting is that other groups of soft-bodied organisms, like those found in the Cambrian-dated Burgess Shale, are deposited in specific locations which were under unusual local conditions. However, the Ediacaran biota are found globally, and are not restricted to any specific environments, meaning that something was different about the world during this time period that allowed for these organisms to be fossilized. Another mystery that also still surrounds this group is their disappearance. There's plenty of evidence to suggest that they were a flourishing group up until their rapid demise, leading to immense speculation on what actually happened. Their extinction also leads to a second question of who exactly are their descendants, or did they leave no descendants behind and were essentially just one of life's many interesting experiments. For now, no one is certain. Another mystery that is tied to extinctions involved the worst extinction event that we are aware of, the Permian-Triassic extinction. This catastrophe annihilated the majority of marine and terrestrial vertebrate species, while also being the largest known extinction event of insects. It's usually thought that massive volcanic eruptions originating from the Siberian traps are to blame, but whatever the case is, it's abundantly clear that it was a dark time for life, which is why so many scientists are fascinated by perhaps the most unlikely of survivors, the Lystrosaurus. The Lystrosaurus was a genus of herbivorous theropsids that were relatively small and superficially quite unremarkable, which has contributed to the interest in its survival. What's more is that many similarly sized animals went extinct, while the Lystrosaurus remained mostly unscathed. This has led to numerous proposals to how it survived, ranging from its apparent increased lung capacity to its burrowing abilities. Other suggestions have also included the evidence of hibernation, a broad diet, and a combination of all these characteristics. However, some paleontologists state that the Permian extinction was so bad that an animal like Lystrosaurus could only have survived out of luck. And it's not just their survival that fascinates paleontologists, as another interesting thing that occurred to Lystrosaurus during this extinction event was that they started dying younger, and what's odd is that the problem actually remained after the event had ended. According to an analysis on their bone growths, Prior to the extinction event, an Elystrosaurus lived on average to be around 13 or 14 years old. But once the dust settled, it seemed like their lifespans had been permanently shifted to just 2 or 3 years. This may have been a result of the harsh conditions that persisted into the early Triassic, although at the same time, the Elystrosaurus actually thrived after the Permian to the point that they accounted for 95% of all individuals in a variety of environments indicating that they were unchallenged in numbers. And this once again has brought even more attention to the Lystrosaurus, as paleontologists have tried to understand how they were able to do so well following such a devastating event, with one of the leading proposals being that there was simply nothing left to compete with or hunt the Lystrosaurus. Hopefully, one day we can finally solve these mysteries, but perhaps by the time we do, even more baffling ones will have arised.